guys, this is James from Squid Gaming, and I am playing Towns. This is uh, one of the games that got voted on the green light thing on Steam, where people can like vote up indie games and the ones that win and get released. Um, and yeah, so this is one of those. One of the first ones, if not the first one, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, it's quite fun. Um, had a cool little intro music that you heard there. I turned it off because then you wouldn't be able to hear me. Um, so yeah, I played it quite a bit. I recommend doing the tutorials. I tried to just sort of wing it and I couldn't. And I have moderate experience in sort of RTS style uh, things, but yeah, it it's not very intuitive because it's quite different from anything else ever played. I sort of, the only way I can describe it is Minecraft cross with Age of Empires and, you know, a little bit more features in Age of Empires and a little bit less combat. Um, although there is still a decent amount of combat, um, but it's all underground and it's against mob, mobs, you know, like spiders and slimes and and they also make that really annoying eating noise. Um, also, um, yeah, so I have it in full screen. This is actually the first time I've played it in full screen. And you can you can actually move to the sides properly. When you're not in full screen, it doesn't really work because, it you know, it's a window. Your mouse just goes outside of the window. It doesn't really work. Um, so, yeah, basically, this is it. This is my little village. That's the noise of something dying chicken apparently same noise for every animal plus people um okay so this is my town this probably took an hour <laughs> because i'm not very good um and basically the game centers around just a few main menus these are like the event messages logs so this is system require uh, system require system messages so Things like um, crowd control effects, people dying, your people dying, um, and messages about when you can't build certain things and you try. This is the combat log, so just all the hits and all the deaths. The hero log, which I assume is going to be similar to the combat log, but when you get heroes, I haven't got one yet, I don't even know how, but I'll figure it out one day, and this is... Uh, this has messages in it for the tutorial. Other than that, I don't know really what it does. System messages again. That's announcement. That's system messages. Okay, whatever. Close enough. Oh, yeah. Here's a f these are froggies. I hate these things because they occasionally just kill my villagers. So now my villagers see this guy has a hammer. That guy has a hammer. Some of them, that guy has a spear. Some of them don't have weapons, though. So I'm hoping the person that sees this guy first is going to have a weapon. Um, so these guys do kill. I started off with 12 dudes, I think. Now I have 8, because they just slowly die. From, like, walking into these carnivorous plants and killing themselves. Okay, where is he? Come on, fight. Also, you notice when you move your mouse towards stuff, it lowers it. Yeah, here we go. So this is the, uh, the fantastic combat animation. I love it. Great combat animation. Um, she picked up a spear. Who is she? Uh, Malkin. Okay, so to give someone a weapon, uh, you hit... Well, you can do this and equip a thing, but I'm just going to go auto-equip, and she should go over there and pick it up when she has time. Here we go. See, she now has a spear. So that's where I got my spears from, from killing froggies. And you can also make um, the hammers with stone. And a masonry bench, I think. I'm going to just turn off the sound effects because that eating thing is really annoying. Okay, so. Basically the way this game works is there's three menus and the, uh, and the, the groups of soldiers and civilians... And also caravan, I don't know how you get a caravan to come to your village, but I assume when it gets to a big enough size. Okay, so there's three, ma three menus other than this stuff and the messages. 
So that's this menu, which is basically um, like ordering things. So if I go, I can't afford most of this stuff, but I've currently got it. So I'll always have two bread in my uh, food stockpile. Um, so if I have the ingredients available with wheat, you set up a little thing. So I've got two bread and I've always got them gathering uh, five wheat to make that bread. It's all explained in the tutorial. If you don't do the tutorial, you don't know how to do that. And it's kind of, if you're doing everything manually, you'll never get anything done. But once you set up all the automatic like workflow things, it works really well and it's really fun. Um, and it's really cool just setting all this stuff up and just watching your villagers just live. Um, it's really awesome. Because you can't actually order these guys around. You can't just click on them and tell them to go somewhere. It's not like that. Which is frustrating at times. But also quite cool that they have free will. Um, and you just sort of give them instructions. But when they're not doing your instructions, they can just do whatever they want. Which usually involves them going and getting themselves killed. Because they're incredibly stupid. Um, so yeah, this is... So that's that menu. It's how you sort of order actual objects. Um, and you to make those, you need certain types of benches and tables. Which need to be placed in these things called zones. That's a bakery zone, a carpentry zone, a masonry zone, and a kitchen zone. That's what I have at the moment. You start with the carpentry zone. That lets you build the carpentry table, carpentry bench which lets you build the wood detailer, which lets you build the baker's table, so then you put the bakery thing, then you make bread so you can feed your people. Masonry lets you make weapons and stone walls, I think. And then obviously the kitchen makes uh, you kill animals and stuff. And to make those, you go into here, uh, and they're all in utilities, that's all the tables and benches. And for the zones, you in the bottom menu, you go zones, and it's got carpentry, masonry, bakery, all the different zones in the game. And, and obviously those items can only be built on those zones. So it's a pretty sort of unique concept. And one of the zones is this, which is uh, personal room, which was, where was it? Uh, there it was, the bed. Um... So each one of my villages now has their own room, and I built a bed in each one. Also, if you click this, if you actually click this side thing, it'll keep it open and lock it. Um, and right-clicking also goes back through the menus. Okay, so those are the zones. Um, so there's a lot of different ones for all the different sort of utilities, plus the rooms. There's like a tavern, an arena. I don't know how to do most of this stuff. It is pretty complicated. Um, so yeah, and I've, then I've started building these guys with walls. So this is sort of like one big building with six doors, just for bedrooms. Um, so the way... See, that obviously it doesn't really look like a house at the moment. So what you do is you press this, you scroll the scroll wheel, or you use these arrows here. So now I, I was here, this is the ground level, this is below the ground level, this is below the ground level again. And it goes all the way down that many levels. I don't know how many it is. It's like 15 or something. And also you can go up. So now you can see this entire mountain. And so that's how you select the different levels of blocks. Um, which is, it works quite well. So if I want to go and build this wall a bit higher. I'll go walls, wood, uh, light wood block. And I'll do that then they will go make those wood blocks with the wood that's in this stockpile which is another zone called stockpiles and you've got raw materials, raw food, prepared food, utilities, furniture something, I don't know what that is, I think it's magical stuff um, um, ooh, that killing a ghost, oh shit that was my human remains that I kept <laughs> I did not know that could happen Well, that's good. I didn't lose anyone, but I think they got pretty seriously wounded. I think they heal over time when they eat, but I'm not sure. I just sort of let them die and hope that they'll come back, which they don't. So you can see... Hmm. 
So he was bit, he was carried the block over there, but oh wait, no, that's right. If I zoom out, yeah, see, there's now a thing on the next level. It's kind of hard because of the isometric view to always see uh, the difference between internal and external walls. I should probably use a different material for the internal walls, uh, but I don't because I'm stupid, I don't know. I'll fix it, make them look nice eventually. Um, so yeah, like, most of the game revolves around going through the different levels and building stuff. Like, when you're in the dungeons, when you dig a hole and killing the monsters, you have to, like, go down here and do that. Um, so yeah, you can build them pretty high. It goes, what, 12 high? So you can build decently high buildings. You know, a nice sort of hotel or something. Um, so yeah, you can do that, but I am still awful at this game. Uh, also this bottom menu has harvest, chop, cut, dig, mine, and till. So I'll show you what chop does, it's pretty self-explanatory. If I select my tree farm, let's go chop on the whole thing. All those trees are now ordered to chop. Anyone that has some spare time will go and chop the absolute crap out of them. Then they revert back to a bush, which will grow into a tree eventually again. Um, and I can go harvest, do it on my whole wheat and fruit tree farm. And now all the wheat and trees that had fruit are now um, going to get harvested. And you can also harvest these wild trees and wild grass and stuff. But it's best to get a nice wood farm and food farm going pretty early on. And I've got these animal farms, which you build in buildings. And they, once you put one animal in them, they will slowly generate animals. So I put one cow in this one. It's now generated three, I think. Generate a few pigs and a few chickens. And they make eggs and milk which people can eat, or you can use them as ingredients. You can kill them for the meat. Raw badger meat, yum. So yeah, um, so that wall is finished. I should probably put some windows in there actually. So, problem is, if you place something that you don't want, you have to just destroy it, um, which is a bit annoying. Also, I don't think I can make windows because I don't have any glass, but I can just leave a hole. So if I now go walls again, like wood block, do it to there. Hopefully they can climb that high and they should build that wall and it will have that hole in the middle, which I can, when I figure out how to make glass and windows, I can put in there. Um, so yeah, they've built that. And yeah, basically, one thing I haven't really done on this world, because I'm kind of scared, is if you dig another layer below this, things like spiders and other monsters will start coming up. Which, at the moment, I don't really have many weapons or armor, and I only have eight guys. And if any of them die, I'm really kind of screwed. So I'm not digging down there at the moment, but I eventually I'm going to run out of stone. Which will be bad. I'm trying to dig this mountain, but it takes ages to dig mountains. It's kind of hard. Um, and there's some stone there which I can get in there. I need iron and things which is only underground and not in mountains. So yeah, it's, it's a pretty complicated game. And as I said before, it's not super intuitive. But once you get the hang of it, it is really cool. And once you sort of set up all your workflows to keep all your guys fed and with weapons and armor and enough wood and resources to keep building it gets sort of you can just sort of relax and just concentrate on doing one thing at a time you can set up soldiers to like patrol on rally points so they will just walk around and like patrol your perimeter keep your people safe um you just give them uber weapons and there is a decent amount of weapons as well like i haven't even found iron yet and if I go to weapons, there is wood, which is obviously pretty damn easy and really crap. Iron, which I haven't found. Stone. Bone, which I have got. You get that from killing bigger animals. 
Uh, bone's quite good. Uh, silver, gold, and other, which is a curved blade. I think this is the kind of stuff you get from actual animals, a snicker, snicker blade blade. A double-edged blade with a double-edged name. That is awesome. And they have, the, they have really cool little things. A zombite mace is falling apart. Ogrite smasher and ogre basher. So unoriginal. Sue me. You can tell this, the guys made this game. They probably didn't expect it to be successful as it was. Not that it's super successful, but, you know, it made it on the front page of Steam, which is a pretty big deal. And it is damn fun. It's not the most polished game. It's not the best looking game by far. It looks at about a year 2000 kind of deal. But it it is so complex and I'm really enjoying it. I also, see that reminds me. I don't need to, but I think I can. If you go log walls, my easy log wall, I can make my log wall higher. Because I can. Just because I think it will look cooler. So I'm pretty sure, guys, like those froggy things just walk straight through my walls. Maybe it's because they're only one high. Hmm. Let's find out. Yay, they made them taller. Except from the bottom view, you can't actually tell they're taller. You have to go to the next view. If you zoom all the way out, you can see your whole town. Okay, they can't get to that one. I think I need to build stairs or something. I'll figure that out later. Um, so yeah, I'll probably stop talking about my really crappy town. And these trees sort of very... They Also, I love about these trees is they grow very uniformly. Like, none of them will be grown, and then they'll just all grow. And then you chop them all down, and then they'll all grow at like, the same time. Which is convenient. Um, oops. Oh well. Um, so yeah. I do really recommend this game. It's really fun. If you like Minecraft, I think you'll like this. I mean, obviously it's very different. But, like, the amount of stuff you can build and customize is similar even though it doesn't look as cool. Um, it's a very different game, really. But it kind of looks like it. And that's why I like it. That's what drew me to it in the first place. And then I love it for completely different reasons. Um, as I well, didn't mention, these stockpiles are kind of a major part. You can just leave all of your stuff just sitting on the ground. Like They will still use this wood. If I tell them to build something with wood over here, they will grab this wood as well as this wood. Whichever's closer, I think. Um, but it's nicer and neater if you put it in stockpiles and you can go manage and you can tell them what not to put in here. So I can tell them to not put badger hides in my raw materials stockpile and I can go make a... Like this one, I said don't put mud in this one and put it over here. This one's only mud and this one's everything but mud. Although there is still the occasional piece of mud. I don't know why. I think they're just stupid. But I can just right click and go destroy mud. Because I don't think I'm ever going to use it anyway. But yeah. Um, it's a really cool game. I strongly recommend it. Because it's a good deal of fun. I like this river. It goes underneath this mountain. I'm pretty sure it does anyway. Oh, maybe not. This looks like it does. Oh, wait, no, yes, it does. It's under... Yeah. That's quite cool. I like how you can scroll through, like, the world. It's really cool. So, yeah. Um, it's a really cool game. I've had a lot of fun with it over the last two days. Played about five hours. Like, four hours straight at one point. Just doing the tutorials. And then building this place. And the tutorials are important. Um, but yeah, it's really fun. I'd love to see you guys build something. If any of you actually end up playing it, because I, I think you'd enjoy it. Um, and yeah, if you have any other games that you think I should look at, 
um, go ahead and let me know. Um, but I'm going to keep playing this and render this video. Um, we'll have some more Herobrine's Mansion. I've got the last two episodes of that to go up still. Um, some more Feed the Beast stuff is coming, although it's pretty unstable at the moment. I'm having a lot of crashes and bugs, so I'm not sure how much I'm actually going to play Feed the Beast. I'm still playing a lot. Of, I played a lot of Tech it recently. My friend, the uh, gaming community that I am involved with in Perth, where I live, uh, recently made a Tech it server, which is really fun because I haven't played Tech it in a while. So I might put some Tech it stuff up of all the cool shit I'm building. And yeah, so thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it and. I hope you go out and get this game. I think it's 15 bucks, which is not much. Um, most people can afford that. If you can't, that's fine. I mean, there's probably better things to do, but, you know, yeah, it's fun. And I am probably going to play it a good deal in the future. One thing I wish it did have was multiplayer, but the fact that it's a very small game, I'm not really surprised that it doesn't. Um, so, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.